In tonight's top stories for you, the Trump administration working to cut costs and restructure three more government agencies. Those include the National Institute of Health, the Food and Drug Administration, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Tonight, your reporter Gabriela Vidal introduces us to one CDC scientist who hopes his research doesn't end with his job. I think I was finally, the last two or three months really, kicking into gear and feeling like part of the team. It was the kind of job research biologist Joe Cardiello says comes around once in a lifetime. I had jumped around in different biological fields, so wanted to work on public health. Just six months ago, he packed up with his wife and daughter, moving to Fort Collins to work at the CDC's Vector Bourne Laboratory. I loved working there. I loved seeing what everyone else was working on. We had a group of, I think, six of us that were um, working on Lyme disease or the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. Life-saving research. We all knew that there were potential um, reductions um, in funding that might happen with the new administration. That came with a faster expiration date than he expected. On Saturday, Cardiello was sent this termination letter via email from the Department of Health and Human Services. I think it's very frustrating because I have seen how hard my boss worked to get me there. I've seen how I've rearranged my life. But it's more than just losing a job. It's just wild to think about how chaotic this will be on all of the research. Specifically working on a groundbreaking new way to detect Lyme disease sooner. Within days after infection, whereas at most Lyme detections that you use, it really takes a while for your body to produce these antigens. What's kind of your reaction to that? I mean, knowing that that was something that he was working on. My reaction to that is truly devastating. Denver resident Olivia Goodrow, who unknowingly contracted Lyme disease when she was seven, says she suffered for nearly two years without answers. At that point, I had been misdiagnosed by 53 doctors. It felt like everything under the sun. Then I was misdiagnosed with Wilson's disease and told that I would be dead by the age of 40 or earlier. And I was told that at eight years old, which was very traumatizing. And then right after that, I was misdiagnosed with Munchausen syndrome. Just like Cardiello, Goodrow's efforts to improve the lives of people with the disease through her nonprofit Live Lyme Foundation have been halted amid federal cuts. We have two NIH grants and both of them are frozen. And I almost feel like I'm seven years old again, eight years old, wondering what is going on. My hope would be that people in this administration would start constructively working with the agencies to, to find places where they could make things more efficient in a constructive and helpful way not only helping support jobs like his, but the research that could save anyone's lives. Ticks do not discriminate. In Fort Collins, Gabriella Vidal covering Call to First.